What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of, I guess, what we'll call Buddhist Translates. <laughs> and this time we're doing Fly High by Burnout Syndromes, also known as Season 2 Opener of Haikyuu. Because, damn, this anime is amazing. It's so binge-worthy, and we can't wait for the new episodes to come out. So we just thought, hey, it's perfect. Yeah. We're obsessed with this anime right now, so it's People have been telling us to watch to it this, for yeah. a long time, and uh, Blue started watching a little bit before, so it was amazing and absolutely right. This song is right. so hype. Yeah, and this song is amazing. <laughs> Fly High is amazing. And so right here, we're going to be translating line for line like we did for Butterfly. And let's get to it. So the first part, I think it's a very, it's a very straightforward uh, beginning. It's just very motivating. It's supposed to be very uplifting. Like with uh, Fly High, sweat, blood, and tears with shining wings and leave everything else behind and into the unknown future. I think it can go in that uh, paragraph. But it's supposed to be just keep going, keep, uh, keep your motivation up, uh, keep flying high kind of thing. Um, and then the next part is a broken young bird glaring at the sky. So we have the underdogs, Karasuno, who are known to not be able to fly anymore. Um, they're not, um, they're very weak kind of state. And then, uh, so even those who cannot, who can do low altitude flight laugh at me. I still want to see the end of the sea. And so I'm guessing like low altitude flight is something that's, you need a lot of skill for you need um a little a little a tiny crow isn't going to be able to do that as well as like other uh grown-up birds and so even though the people with high skill or people who have more experience than us even though they laugh at us you know we still want to go keep going ahead which i think is a very it's just supposed to be like you know i think it's very caught us because they do want to keep going and even though they are they keep getting mocked they they still keep fighting and the thing about this line is that the kanji that was used in the Japanese lyrics is actually not the normal um, one, uh, normal kanji used for like a happy laugh or a laugh that you would send or like you would write when you're talking to friends kind of thing. It's it's a very um, dark, it's a very mocking laughter. Very so uncommon think, kanji. Yeah, yeah, it's very uncommon. It's, it's just, it's very negative. It's a very negative laugh. And so I think it's very fitting that they would use it here. It's, I think they just really wanted you to know that it was a very mocking, like, um, like they don't see, they see them as like below, uh, they don't even see them as like um, someone on their level kind of laughter. So, <clears throat> and then fly against the current with a calm mind. So that's just going against what everyone's telling them, going against maybe what, teachers or like their friends or even like other enemies are telling them they just want to keep keep on going kind of thing and then hop step jump is something that's fairly common in japan like in uh songs and uh and uh children's storybooks and stuff but i think it's just it's very fitting for volleyball so and then we go into the second chorus and what i like about this song is that they really kind of change up the choruses so the first two lines or first two to three lines are the same then we get the with the impulsiveness of youth and instinct what i really like about this is that the character kanji for uh, youth is they use the character blue like the color blue and what they in, J in japanese um they use that character to show yeah just youth so in japanese when you say senen which is somebody from like their teens to you know mid-20s is senen um, blue age, you call that the blue age. Um, that's kind of like, yeah, when you're young, you're not ripe yet, you're still growing, stuff like that. Um, and Seishun is like the, those days of when you were in your youth. And it definitely, we're talking about from like the teens to maybe even like college or something like that. So with the impulsiveness of youth and the instinct and it's, it's more like the instinct and impulsiveness of youth, um, showing claws and fangs. Definitely a reference to Karasno or crows and also their youth again. They're always kind of clawing at things. They're always hungry. They're aggressive. Through the road of struggles, keep flying high until your dreams come true. Very straightforward. And that's mm -hmm. it's a really clean way to finish that chorus. So the next one is just raindrops start falling, interrupting my rhythm, which is just, I think, raindrops do interrupt the rhythm of flying or wings, I suppose. Um, and then dark clouds looming, a long stormy night is up ahead. So even though there might be something, it might not be a very bright future or maybe things could go wrong, they still want to keep on going. Um, and then roaring thunders turning the clouds of violent waves into cheers, which I think it could be taken two ways, which is one is you take all those like the mocking laughter or the... Um, I guess all the struggles that you'll go through and turn that into motivation, turn that into the flame that'll keep you going. 
or it could be that you're you want to make you want to turn your enemies into friends or enemies into someone that you can learn from and so it's something um you turn something negative into a positive there was one part in the anime and i wanted to rem- i wanted to like look through the episodes a little bit but it was just this one bit and i can't remember it um but there was one part i want to say it was from a match it might have been from the the where they do the summer training arc best arc um but there's one person that does like a serve and they're on the opposing side, but the coach says, sometimes there's a player that does a play so out of this world that even if you're going against them, all you can do is just applaud for them. And that line right there made me feel that like it linked me to that scene so much because I really like that scene because it's like you find the beauty and you find when something is so good, even if you're losing and that's the reason why you lose, you just... All you can do is just sit there going, holy crap, that's amazing. And Hinata does that all the time, right? He, he, when he sees someone that's, like, super good, even if it's, like, crushing him to the ground, he's, like, so stoked. He's like, oh, my God, you're so good. Please teach me. Yeah. And oh. I, yeah, it's very, <laughs> like, it really, really describes not only just, you know, the show, too, but Hinata as a character, I thought. Yeah. And then Une de Toi is one, two, three in French and is also actually used a lot in uh, music and dance. For example, ballet, they use une de toi as a way to count rhythm and uh, rhythm and movement. So that's, I'm guessing that's what, that, that's why they use une de toi instead of just like a regular one, two, three. Yeah, it, was, it seemed really random mm-hmm. at first. And then when we looked at the lyrics in like the lyric site, the, ca- the kanji is actually one, two, three, just like just normal one, two, three. But the actual lyrics on the music video is different and it actually says one, one speed, two speed and three speed but of course that's not how you actually read it in japanese but they went a little creative yeah it's just referencing the first second and third tempo of uh hinata's uh i guess spike attacks right yeah. i mean not just hinata but the spike tempo where's the minus tempo <laughs> and then we go into the last chorus again they they do something really cool here the flames that have left scorch marks on my heart become the lighthouse that shines the way what's interesting here is just like we talked about that laugh thing where it's like a super uncommon kanji the kanji here the character for flames is i didn't know how to read it i had to google it i had no idea that it was flames um and uh it there's two there were two meanings to this when i looked it up one was just the normal flames right fire flames hot and then the other one was this more emotional and more poetic flames that comes from um, kind of this very strong energy that comes from that's kind of fueled from negative or dark a uh, dark place and it results in this kind of very motive motion right and I've never read this before and then I kind of dissected the characters because in Japanese kanji it's made from different characters and one of the characters that's in this flame kanji was also used for uh, another character that means to fall for something like to fall but not physically fall but like fall into depression or fall you know fall into a trap um, like an emotional trap kind of thing and so I thought that was really interesting. I I learned something new doing this, <laughs> and then let and that's why it's scorch marks instead of just like getting burned. It's something more deep. It's there. It stains. No matter when, even after the incident is done, it stains like a tattoo, right? And that's what drives him. And I thought it was just so poetic that that becomes a lighthouse, right? It's it's devastating. It's like killing them, but that makes them grow and that shows them the path. And it's like, yep, that's pretty much the anime. Yeah, that's what yeah. happens, <laughs> right? Uh, the ray of light from dawn blooms the flowers of talent, and that's the the flowers of talent are the are the high schoolers from Karasno, not just Karasno, but all the other high schools too. Um, shout out to Nikoma, and uh, <laughs> but that's what you know. It's all about blooming this talent, especially Hinata, right? And uh, breaking your limits at top speed until the end clean and then they <laughs> kind of finish it off with the choruses again so yeah that was now those were the lyrics to fly high what'd you think Blue? did you expect that it was going to be like this i did not i thought it was going to be a little bit more like very direct maybe references to volleyball um or references to maybe hinata or something i didn't think it would have it would be this poetic so it was it was very surprising like in a good way like it made me love the song even more 
what was different about this and Butterfly was that the person that wrote Butterfly obviously was told about Digimon and they kind of did, you know, but I think age wise, they weren't in an age bracket to watch the show. But these guys are, I think, like kind of early 30s kind of. And um, I feel like they're the they're a fan of the show or the manga. I feel like the references that they make are extremely subtle. They don't say like the name of moves, characters or anything like that. But the subtle little, you know, like the under thing and like uh, the flames part, um, the and then how they have the little like claws and fang, little like bird references also too, but in, not in a really really obvious way. I thought is like, oh, these guys actually like the show. Yeah. Like imagine being that like artist that, yeah. that wanted to do this theme song and they get it. Like I yeah. feel like they put all of it <laughs> and i thought that was like really really cool so yeah that was it for fly high we'll keep doing these if you guys like them um it can be like modern anime or old anime it doesn't have we to do be have anime some too, planned but. but yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what we do next yeah hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> that and we'll see you guys next time we'll see you guys next time bye, -bye.